masks and face coverings. They are required, of course, in public places here in Nevada. But convincing everyone to wear one has become a really difficult task. That's right, and some have suggested it's become a partisan debate. But as reporter Dan Grossman found out, it can be traced back to our cultural roots. Who knew a piece of cloth could be so contentious? I think it's a part of our cultural DNA. Cultural psychologist at the University of Maryland, Michelle Gelfand, that too. Well, we've evolved to prioritize autonomy and freedom over rule following. And this is a kind of situation right now when we really need to tighten up. Tighten up. It comes down to the idea that we're either tight or loose in regard to following rules. And where we as humans fall on that scale can be chalked up to one thing survival. Groups that have a lot of collective threat in their histories, whether it's Mother Nature's fury, like think famines and disasters, or human-made threat, like invasions or pathogen outbreaks, they tend to be stricter and tighter. And the logic is that those, th those rules help people to coordinate to survive. Think back to 9-11, when terror was a new threat. It was one of the few times Americans were willing to sacrifice freedoms for safety. Four months after the attacks, a CNN Gallup poll found 50% of Americans were willing to sacrifice their civil liberties for safety measures. Nearly two years later, in September 2003, that number dropped drastically to only 29%. You know, this is a very puzzling moment. You know, why people are not responding like we did collectively in other times of our history. And I think it's because people are confused about how serious the threat is, in part because our leadership's been also very conflicted. Once threat becomes really concrete, and it's clear that we have to follow the rules, people start doing that. Gelfand says it's not only the words expressed by our country's leadership, but the actions taken. Without a unified message and response, she says it's only natural consensus will be split. I think that we need very strong leadership that really helps people to overcome that impulse to really prioritize freedom over rule following during a very serious collective threat. So where do we go from here? Michelle says the only way forward is not through shaming people who won't wear masks, rather a clear message full of credible information and stories to make a pervasive disease more relatable to those it has not yet touched. Mother Nature's fury doesn't really uh, discriminate who's going to get this virus or not. So tangible, concrete stories, empowering people to realize it's temporary and that they can really make a difference. I'm Dan Grossman reporting.